In this video, we're going to be showing you how to flash and program a CAT engine control module. Now, I was sent this ECM and asked to see if it was communicating and if it was working, and it was not. And you can see it's off the truck. I'm bench testing it here. Most of the time you're gonna be doing this while the ECM's on the truck, unless you have a jump out harness. So obviously this is the old ECM. We need to see if it's gonna communicate first. And I'm using a Com Adapter 3, which is a CAT communications tool. You don't have to use a Com Adapter 3 if you want to, but you are gonna to have to use CAT Electronic Technician, which is a software program. There's other adapters out there like the Nexic and some other ones, but Com Adapter 3 is the best one. So. We're gonna be using ET a lot. This is electronic technician. This is how we're going to flash and program our ECM. So what we're trying to do is communicate with the old ECM and trying to get the information off of it first. Now notice that the J1708 is not blinking green. This is a bad indication that the ECM is fried and is not communicating, which is bad because this means we're gonna to have to manually program this ECM and trying to get information off of it's going to be difficult. So give it a few seconds here. It's gonna come up with a prompt that says ECM not found. So unable to communicate with an ECM. This was, uh, I tried this a couple times, ECM's dead. I cannot communicate with it. So that's unfortunate. And the reason that's unfortunate is because we can't do a copy config. And a copy config is under service, right here, copy configuration. If you could communicate, you'd wanna do a copy config to save all of your parameters. So what we're looking at here is the SysWeb home screen. Now, if you look down here, it says service software files. You're gonna click on that and that's going to take you to the place where we're gonna get our flash file, which we'll need for our new ECM. Now, if you look over here, there's SimsI and TMI. We're gonna discuss those later, but for the most part, we just need to go to our service software file section here. Now, you need a Sys login, which means you have to be in the CAT system. If you are not in there, you're gonna have to have to get your flash files from somewhere else. So we're gonna click on flash file there after we click on service software file. And you're gonna be given this prompt and you can type in your engine serial number, which you will need. And then it's going to give you a flash file part number. Okay, so after you type that in, you're gonna type search and it's gonna give you your number you need. Now this is a download. Now let's talk about this flash file name here. If you know the old flash file number off the old ECM, if you'd be able to communicate with it, you would want to type that in and not use the serial number. The reason for that is if the engine's been re-rated and you'd search by serial number, it's going to give you the wrong file name. Now, we don't know the old flash file, so what we're going to do is click on this, and then we're going to save it to our desktop. And remember, we got this by searching by engine serial number. And you're just going to click the little arrow and save as and save it to your desktop and then we're gonna go back into ET. So we're back in ET. We're now connected to our new ECM. So it's going to be searching for a new ECM. Now you can actually skip this step and go directly to WinFlash, but I like to make sure that it is gonna communicate with new ECM. So came up with a blank box, flash required. You're gonna click flash, which is gonna take you to WinFlash, which is this. And it's gonna disconnect and reconnect and WinFlash is only used for flashing the ECM. It's not used for doing your parameters or anything else. Now, if you are just updating a flash file and you're reusing the same ECM, you'd also be doing the same procedure. You'd be getting the new flash file and you would be using WinFlash to update the flash file. So like I said, in WinFlash, it's gonna disconnect and then reconnect, so you gotta go through this step here. So once it loads, I'll show you how to select your flash file. And of course, this video is not the most exciting. It's a very technical video, but if you're trying to program an ECM, this video is gonna show you how to do that. So once it brings up, come on, come on. Sorry, this takes forever. This is the actual time it takes to reconnect in WinFlash. And any second now, it's gonna pop up. There we go, okay. Now my computer's a piece of crap, so it's gonna give me this uh, too many client server issue. But 
your computer probably won't come up with that. Now you're gonna go to the top right and you're gonna your files and you're gonna select the desktop and then you're gonna search and find that flash file, which this one was a 2468235. And you're gonna select it and then click open. Now, once it opens, you're going to check the flash file. So do you see where it says 3126B low Knox? And there's some writing here. Look here, make sure that the horsepower and torque are accurate because if you get it wrong now, especially if you get it too low now, it's gonna to wanna to rewrite in the future, which will prompt factory passwords and gonna charge you a fee. So if that's correct, which this is correct for this engine, you're gonna to go to the bottom left where it says begin flash and you're gonna click it. And then on the bottom right, there's gonna be a little progress bar and I'm not gonna make you sit through this whole thing. I'm gonna skip ahead here to about 100%. So it's pretty much done. It doesn't take very long on these older engines. On the regen engines, it takes quite a while. So flash complete, that's good. We're gonna click back on cat ET now. And then we're gonna go back to cat ET. And of course it's going to disconnect and reconnect, but I'm gonna skip most ahead. And it's gonna prompt you for a warranty download. You're not gonna do that yet because you have not programmed the ECM. You've just flashed it. Now looking at the status screen here or this is the little header information there's no engine serial number date and time or not program pretty much the whole configuration is going to be blank except for a few presets and i'm going to be showing you how to program these now if you see these don't touch them it's a history eraser button just kidding so these are your fls and fts but we're going to be going through the entire parameters here not going to be going through every one, just the important ones. You'll have to program most of them yourself. So first ones we need to identify here at the very top, once we've expanded all, is your rating number. Now most are just going to have one rating number. Just select that. Next is going to be our engine serial number. This is very important. Obviously you want to get this correct. This is letting you know once you program an engine serial number, you can't put it in test mode. Don't worry about that. Just put the right serial number in. And then once you program that, we're going to move on to our truck manufacturer, which is a feature that's kind of annoying because it's going to make us disconnect and reconnect again. And you can see right here, truck manufacturer. This needs to be programmed. There's usually only two settings, GM or other. If it's a GM, set it to GM. If it's a Freightliner or anything else, put it to other. This is in an RV with a Freightliner chassis, so we're going to set it to other. So let's select other and click OK. It's going to disconnect and reconnect, unfortunately. Now it's disconnecting. It's going to reconnect. I'm going to cut out most of the waiting time here. So let me cut this section here. We're going to skip ahead. And it's going to prompt you again for warranty download. You're not going to do a warranty download again because we haven't finished programming yet. Now, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to go over the entire configuration, but the important ones here. Some of these in the configuration you're going to have to find yourself, like the vehicle speed calibration, tachometer, things like that. I'm going to show you a trick, though, if you could not connect with the old ECM on how to program that. So we're going to expand all again, and we're going to get back down to our FLS and FTS. So we have our FLS and FTS, and we're going to need to program these. And there's other things we're going to need to program, such as our timing calibration and injector trim, depending on which engine. This is 3126, so there's no injector trim. If you have to program your timing calibration, I'm going to show you a trick here, and it involves using copy configuration. And you can see our engine speed signal calibration has not been performed yet. Now, if you could have communicated with the old ECM, you would have done something called a copy configuration, which basically you just... Open the old ECM, go to Copy Configuration, which I'll be doing here in a second. So you're going to go up and go to Copy Configuration under Service, ECM Replacement, not Fleet Configuration, ECM Replacement. And it's going to ask you if you want to open a file. Now, if you could have communicated with the old ECM, you would have said Cancel, and it would have brought up all the information, and you can save it. Now, what we're doing here is we need a 7AS file. See? No data is available. We need a 7AS file, so I found one on another laptop, C7AS. Now this is a different 7AS than the one we're working on, but that doesn't matter. All we're gonna do is carry the timing over. 
So this is, like I said, a different engine, but it's the same series. So it's 3126 7AS. You're going to deselect everything. And the reason you're deselecting the configuration and the totals is because, remember, this is a different engine. So you might be wondering, well, what's it going to carry over? It's just going to carry over the timing file. So we're going to copy config, but we're not doing anything. So we're going to click Program ECM. And it's going to ask you if you want to change your truck manufacturer. Nope, we do not, because it's already set to other. And it's going to come up with a little prompt, and it's going to go pretty quick, because it's not really carrying much over. And hopefully it'll say timing successful. Timing calibration was successfully transferred, so you don't have to do timing anymore. That's a good trick. Really smart guy showed me how to do that. And for our next trick, we are going to be going into the FLS and the FTS. Now, these are very important. This is your full load setting and your full torque setting. These have to be programmed correctly. You don't want to just enter any numbers in there. And higher numbers don't mean more power. You want to set the numbers from what the factory had them set at. Now, if you don't know what those are, I'm going to show you how to find those. So once those are set... Those are good to go. Now, if you put the wrong ones in, you're going to have to get a factory password to change them. That's really hard to do unless you have high-level CAD access. Now, the next thing would be you'd set your current totals. Uh, I was in the copy config file here. You're going to go up and select your current totals. And if you know them, such as your distance or the engine hours, you'll enter that in. Obviously, you're not going to know what most of these are. So getting back to our SIS homepage here, I'm going to show you SimsEye. Now, not everyone has access to this, but if you do have access to it and you're programming a ECM that is dead and you can't communicate with, this is going to help you, or it can help you. And the reason for that is you can view old downloads of the ECM, so you'll have a hard copy of your configuration. So once you click on SimsEye, it's going to be this screen. You're going to click on Service Reporting on the top here. And that's going to take you to another page. And this page is going to have some more information on the left. You're going to click on View ECM Download. And once you click View ECM Download, it's going to take you to View ECM Download page. In this page, you're going to enter the engine serial number. Now, I'm just going to enter a random one, MXS01234. And as you can see, this is at multiple downloads. You're going to click on View right there. And hopefully there's been a download. If a download's never been done on this engine, you're not going to have this option. But this one had downloads. And if you click view, it's going to open up another page. And that page is this. This is going to be about 10 pages long. This is a download. And this download is going to have a printout of the entire engine configuration. It's not as good as a copy configuration. But it's better than nothing because at least this way you know your tachometer, your vehicle speed, FLS and FTS, all that stuff. Now, if there's never been a download, you're going to have to click on TMI on our Sys homepage. Now, you see where it says View More underneath here? If your additional service information doesn't have these options, you can find them in View More. But once you click TMI, it's going to bring you to this screen. And follow my arrow again where there's a search bar. And if you type in the engine serial number there and then click retrieve data, which is to the bottom left of my arrow, that's going to bring up another screen. And that's going to be a dyno run of that engine. But more importantly, that's going to have your full load setting and your full torque setting, your FLS and your FTS. And that would be what you're entering in for your FLS and your FTS. You cannot leave them blank and you don't want to put the wrong numbers in. So if you don't have a download, you can use TMI to at least get your FLS and FTS. Really technical video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Now it's time for a little segment I like to call... So we have a coworker of mine who's doing a rebuild, and he found in this truck engine these large pieces of metal that were in the oil pan. And this is a rebuild that got towed in. It wasn't running. And there's some pieces of piston rings there as well. And turns out it was this liner. Uh, the piston itself was actually in good condition other than the rings. But as you could see, the liner was not in the, we'll say, best of conditions. It was really broken. I've never seen a liner just totally blown apart like this before. And yet the piston's still in good condition. Kind of weird. This is on a C13 Cat. 
More destruction. Apparently, there's another company that makes diesel engines called Cummins, and uh, this Cummins, unfortunately, is a buddy of mine, and driving his truck around, and side of the highway, he was like, hey, uh, there's a piece of engine sticking out of the side of my engine. Not very good news for him, but he's already got it fixed. Hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs>